Sometimes studio is not going to have the parts that you want, or maybe you want to edit an existing part to customize it a bit, or even to put decals on your minifigures or on some parts. That is where the part designer tool is going to come into play, and that's what this video is going to be talking about. Very briefly, Parts Designer is a tool that's made to allow you to edit existing parts or to import parts from other programs and make them available in studio or to be able to add custom prints and decals to existing parts. In this video, I'll take a first look at Parts Designer. So if you have never used it and are curious about it, this will be the video for you. I'm just going to simply go through all the functions in Part Designer. One of the most common uses of Parts Designer is making those decals. So that's the very first thing I'm going to show you how to do in Parts Designer. Before I continue, a quick reminder about the Studio Lego Designers Facebook group. This group continues to grow and there's a lot of great contributions happening from all the members. It is a fantastic positive group to join and get your questions answered or offer advice or show off your works that you've created in studio. So if you wish to join that community, go on over to Studio Lego Designers Facebook page the link will be in the description below. As well, for those that don't know, I am a freelance commission Lego designer. So if you have a project you wish to see brought into reality in brick form, then please get in touch with me. Also, I create instructions for other designers. So if you have a design that you wish to have instructions created for it, please get in touch. Thank you so much. In order to get to the part designer tool, you're going to go up to tool on the top menu bar here on the left hand side, click on tool and then click on part designer. When you've done that, Studio will open a new program and this is the first screen you are going to see in part designer. From here, you can create a new brick from scratch, or you can import a studio part, an object file, a .dat file, or an LDR file. If you watch my video on importing parts from the LDRAW library, you'll already be familiar with this. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a little notification up with that video. For now, we're going to want to create a new brick, so create new and then we have these options where we can decorate a minifig decorate parts or start a completely new brick from scratch so since we're going to go decorate parts we will click on that and then we have this screen that opens up and we can choose what kind of part we wish to decorate there are only so many parts available at this time. You can't decorate every part within the studio library. But the most common parts are here. So we're going to choose a 2x2 two two round tile. And then you can click on this window here where it says add an image to apply. I'm going to use my logo. And then like any other graphics program, you are able to edit that how you wish to get it to look the way you want it on the brick. And then we can add that to the viewport. So now we have our brick with our custom design on it. And we can export that to Studio. From here, you can give it whatever name you want. Give it a brick link item number and also change the file name for it. Back in Studio now, if you want to see that part, you're going to go to Custom Parts in the Brick Palette menu. And there we have our round tile with my logo on it. 
can change the color of these custom bricks however you wish. There is no color identifier associated with them. So you can see it's really easy to add custom decals to many different parts in Studio. On the Studio Lego Designers Facebook page, there have been people that have shared files, making it a bit easier to do things like place decals on minifig parts. So you can go over there and check those out. So before I show you the rest, I'm going to very quickly run through the features of Part Designer. So if we go along the left-hand menu, we have the option of creating different types of bricks. So if you go up to this top bar here, we have the option of creating bricks, plates, or tiles. So if we drag this plate out and stretch it out, we can make ourselves a rare five by one. If we want, we can add studs to our custom brick. We can either use full studs or studs with a hole in it. We can change the bottom tubes out. We can add clips or axles or bars, etc., to our design. And we can put different types of holes into the brick. We can also use the erase tool to erase part of the brick, or if you want to get rid of the studs in certain spots. And lastly, down here, we can use the decal button to import a decal into our brick like I have shown previously. In the connectivity tab, we can see where our brick is going to be connecting to other bricks. So in red is a stud and in green are the anti-studs. And you can change those around as you want. Sometimes you have to edit a part that you bring into Studio from LDRAW, for instance, because it doesn't have the proper connectivity. And this is where you would do that. You can change the position of your part. You would use that, for instance, if you're trying to create a complex part that has more than one brick connected to it. You would want to make sure that you get the measurements just right. In the bottom right down here, you can also change the dimensions of the brick. So if we want to go six by instead of five by, you can change that bounding box. So very quickly, let's go through creating a brick so you can see how that's done. We're going to start with a two by two plate. And what we're gonna do here is create a brick that I think everybody would like to have is a plate with studs on both sides. So we start with our plate. On the bottom, we can see that we have the bottom tube, which we don't want, so we will delete that. And now we're left with the brick wall around the edge. Now what we want to do is create an inverted version of this plate, so we will copy and paste that. And to flip it over, instead of using the arrow keys like you do in Studio, you're going to use the AWSD keys to rotate it as you wish. So we'll flip that upside down. And then we'll put this on the bottom of the other brick. And you'll notice that there's a bit of overlap here, but we want it to be flush. So we can change the dimension to 0.4 and that will make everything flush. Now you can see we have a few problems here. We have some lines in our brick and our studs are not quite lined up yet. So let's move these studs. And now we're going to have to get rid of those lines. Next, what we want to do is just move this one off of that. And we are going to erase those lines. So if we go to the Erase tool, one of the options is to erase the outlines. We'll just get rid of all of these vertices.
And then we will do the same thing on the other brick. And now when we drag this brick over top of the other one, we won't see the lines. We first have to change our position again. And now our brick looks like it would in real life. All we have to do next is group those things together. So we go to model and group. So now it will act as if it is a single brick. Again, you're going to export to studio and then you can use the brick as you wish there. When you're going to save your parts, you can go up to the file menu and it will save it as a dot part file. There's a whole lot of other things you can do with part designer, but I want to keep it brief. So I will stop this video there. In a future video, I will explore Part Designer more in depth so you can see how powerful of a tool it is for you to be creating your own parts. Next week, I'm going to take a look at how to use Technic parts in your studio designs, especially geared towards Technic designers. Hopefully you'll join me for that. If this video has helped you out, please take the time to like subscribe and share it around to others who will benefit from it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Keep dreaming of bricks. Bye-bye.